Hello folks, Phil Gallagher, aka Thraben You, for another legacy video. I'm not fully moved into the new place yet, but I'm off to a good start. I don't have some of the things like lighting set up and figured out yet, but I figured I was far enough along that I could go ahead and start trying to record a video. So Sean D sent me this Saga Depths deck list, and it, it needs some love, but I like some of the things that are going on here. So we're very familiar with this whole Dark Depths, Thespian Stage combo right by now, right? You target Depths with Stage, Stage has no ice counters, you sacrifice uh, your stuff, you make a Merit Lodge. And 20 damage usually gets the job done in one shot. Well, Sean wanted to protect this with Knot of This World, which is a free counterspell as long as you know, your opponent is trying to get rid of some big dumb creature. And we're actually going to be playing something other than just Merit Lodge. We are also going to be playing Phyrexian Dreadnought. So the idea here was to be this Dark Depths Thespian Stage deck that also has Phyrexian Dreadnought that also has Urza's Saga. And kind of my primary issue with this deck is the level of greed that it has. So if we take a quick look at the deck... This is playing blue-black cards in the main deck. It has black-black cards in the main deck. It has white, blue, black, and green cards in the sideboard. It has Chalice of the Void, while also having a one-drop that is central to the plan, while also having most of your sideboard slots taken up by one-drops. So, essentially, I just don't think that this deck is focused enough as is, and I think the mana is actually really quite bad. I'm going to count Mycosynth Gardens as a colorless land because it does not, like, cast your spells on curve. It can cast it one turn behind curve, which is really bad by legacy standards. And if we don't count Cavernous Souls as full colored source, um, if we don't count Ottawara as a full colored source because it doesn't cast most of your spells, to see the problem here. So essentially, I think this deck is strained in terms of its mana base. And I am saying that even counting the Mox Diamonds and Mox Opals that are supposed to help out with this, I think the deck is unfocused in its game plan and is going to trip over itself a lot. I think it's going to have mana problems. So I rebuilt this. And this is what I came up with about after half an hour of tinkering. One of the first things that I wanted to do was eliminate most of the colors in this deck list. The primary cards in this deck list are Vampire Hexmage, which requires black mana, and I didn't really see the need for Stifle and Lazav because we just have a colorless card that does the same thing that isn't going to tax our mana base. And I've gone up some numbers. If our plan is to be a Not of This World deck, we want to be going fast so that, you know, this counters the first removal spell, and then our opponent is dead. And if we want to go faster, I want to max out on Phyrexian Dreadnought, all four copies, and I want to play Mycosin Gardens, which can copy it to like have another way to enable this early. And again, if conceptually my plan is supposed to be take care of this thing, or sorry, like take care of my opponent early on, I also need some amount of interaction. Generally speaking, if you are not going to play any sort of interaction for your opponent. You have to be going very fast. Like, turn one wins fast, and we can't go that fast. So I think we need some sort of counterspell or other interaction, and that was just fully missing from the original version. And so I'm going to try out Thoughtseize here. I am, very reluctantly, playing Bayou over Swamp in this deck list. I needed to come up with something for the control matchups. And I just wanted some piece of inevitability. And a life from the loam out of the sideboard recycling, probably just Urza Saga, is a great plan versus control decks, unless they specifically have Force of Negation. You just get to try it again and again and again and again until something works. I think Cavernous Souls is a little sketchy. Like, it will force through an appropriate card, but, like, this doesn't cast Thought Seize. 
So I went down to three versus the original four, but straight up zero might just be correct. I've lowered, I think, the artifact count by one, so I dropped down one Mox Opal as well. And the sideboard, instead of doing this crazy, unfocused crop rotation package that was going to eat up most of my sideboard, um, I opted to just run good cards. Like, I'm just going to run four Sudden Edicts for when I need to remove stuff, four Ley Lines, a handful of Discard, and other stuff is going to be good against Creature Decks. One thing that I want to explain here is Emrakul. Painter is picking up a lot in popularity, and just having something that can shuffle your deck back uh, after you get milled out is really valuable. And occasionally you get a show-and-tell player as well. All right, uh, with that being said, I think I'm going to go ahead and hop into a league here. Feedback is very much appreciated if I sound echoey, I need to know if my lighting is not good enough, I need to know all that sort of stuff, um, and that'll be true, you know, for the coming week or so as I kind of get set up a little bit more. All right, let's battle. Okay, if I keep this hand, this is an Urza Saga hand. So Saga, well, Mox Diamond first. Mox Diamond, Pitching Depths, play Saga, hope that I don't get Wastelanded. It is a perfectly reasonable game to play. It is unexciting. It is not sexy. I think I'm still going to do it since I'm on the play. So, Diamond. For Depths. Saga. Pass. For real bad versus Wasteland. But we dodged that. Basic Swamp. Thought saves me. Ha <laughs> Uh, this is only partially good news, though. Duress probably means something like a mono black Saga Storm deck or an Ant deck or something like that. Uh, no more Dark Depths. I'm going to go ahead and play out an Urvarg preemptively so my Dark Depths will tap for mana later. Did I settle on Pithing Needle in the sideboard? No, it's in the main deck somewhere. At least I hope it's in the main deck. Construct time. Mycosynth Gardens. Sure. Yeah. So my opponent is fetching around Pithing Needle here. Perfectly reasonable. Map's okay. Catosphere Spear might just be better. Like I, assuming my opponent is some sort of storm deck, I, I will just kill them by attacking them with Constructs, and the extra life link makes a storm kill harder. Let's do that. Pick up Shadow Spear. Crash in for my four, and then figure out what land I'm playing. I guess it's depths. So I'll show my opponent that. Also, um, obviously, once my opponent showed the volcanic island, they are not on a black, uh, like saga depths or not saga depths, saga storm. Sure, sure, sure. This is a scary turn for me. Things get a little bit less scary once I connect with one of these, and my life total increases a bit. And once I connect one more time, Adnaws becomes something that I have to worry about a lot less. All right, cool. Cavern of Soul. Let's go ahead. Put a Shadow Spear. Go to combat. Back with all of these. After no blocks. Ahead and got a second Shadow Spear. Oh my god, this is legendary? I've never played... More than one Shadow Spear in a deck. Legit had no idea that was legendary. All right, well, today I learned. Reordain. Also, I absolutely clicked on the wrong Shadow Spear to keep, so I dealt one less damage and did not gain five life. So that's a fuck up on top of a fuck up. Yeah, that's fine. Ball Ritual. Pop this out for a minute, sure. Yep. Cast in flames. Uh, my opponent has no tutor in graveyard. So it's fully whether or not this brainstorm finds them a tutor. Uh, Lion's Eye Diamond does not do it. Oh, uh, Lion's Eye Diamond lets them cast more cantrips, though. Now they can preordain those cards to the bottom. Bottom, bottom. New LED, sure. So they can brainstorm. It's an Infernal Tutor. Storm is 13. The Tendrils very much kills me, and my opponent could have cast a whole bunch of more things. So my 
my mistake did not cost me this game. Um, it very easily could have, though. Okay. Inquisition is fine. Hormod's Crypt and Leyline are unexciting, but fine. I'm probably going to get rid of Not of This World. I'm not super expecting too much interaction for my creatures. Go ahead and get rid of Pithing Needle. Hit a Polluted Delta or maybe a Wishclaw Talisman. I can consider these, but eh. Expedition map is pretty slow for this matchup. And I can probably trim a Torpor Orb. Well, this is a keep. Ox Opal. Not going to immediately be on. May end up being Urza Saga Fodder. Um, I'm going to play Mox Diamond, Discarded Depths, play Thoughtseize, and then make my decision about how I am playing this game. I will take your Brainstorm, which is a faster goldfish. So I'm always going to play this out. If I play Urza Saga, a 3-3, three, three, then a 4-4, four, four, then two five fives. Yeah, I think I'll just make a 20-20. Urborg. Not being an actual mana source right now kind of sucks. Yeah, play that anyway. Because then next turn... I can play Urza Saga, use that to activate Depths. Good. That not producing mana is such a huge deal. Uh, second Mox Opal doesn't do anything, even though they're different art. All right, there's a Saga. Kill my opponent on my turn four. Okay, yep. Oh, so, Sage target Depths. Yep. And I don't think I will be changing anything. I didn't really see any different information here. Uh, yeah, no. Too many ley lines. Oh my god, why? Um, I mean, I have Dark Depth Stage and one mana towards it, I guess. Like, I barely want one ley line. Like, it, it does stuff. It shuts off Past and Flames lines. It makes uh, Cabal Ritual worse. But it's not really, like... Leyline is a slam dunk in this matchup. I will play this out. I'll drop a stage here. We got oh, just a land. Oh, sure. Brainstorm's fine. Phyrexian Dreadnoughts have been hiding. Thoughtseize is A OK with me. That doesn't disrupt my thing that will kill my opponent. But I'm not really disrupting them either. Like, Leyline is technically disruption, but it's not strong. Ooh, they're just going to go off. Sure. So this is probably an ad nauseum baseline. Okay. So it looks like they're thinking about keeping some blue. All right. This should pretty easily beat me. My opponent is playing Hercules Recall. Uh, they don't have a way to get Hellbent for Infernal Tutor to do cool stuff yet. Ooh. They are now at the point where things can kill them. I think I'm okay. Now, Echoing Truth means that my Merit Lodge isn't just going to kill them immediately, though. Oh, there's more. Sure. Okay. Yes. Uh. Did you just naturally draw the Tendrils there? Oh, you drew an LED. Okay. Yeah, that's going to beat me. So, crack for some color, and then cast Tendrils, and I die. Yep, yeah, and this is what I was talking about, about Leyline of the Void being a soft hate card. Like, it denied a couple of mana to a Cabal Ritual, but not enough. GG's. Uh, this is, like, all the same side of the deck here. This hand doesn't actually do anything. I'm going to go ahead and ship this. Uh, this hand has the same problem. Like, I have half of multiple different combos, but not a functional hand that has any plan whatsoever. Turn one, Dark Depths or Stage. Turn two, Petal, Petal, other one. Probably keep not of this world. Just an absolute super YOLO hand. All right. One Depths, one Dreadnought back. Hope I am not punished for playing these out. Prismatic Ending on a Lotus Petal would punish me. But if I play them out now, my hand is basically immune to discard. Second one... Play stage out first. 
That way, if this gets wastelanded, I can still top deck Vampire Hex Mage to play Dark Depths. Marsh Flats. Okay. Archon beats me. Cool, cool, cool. Yep. All right, at least they didn't make it on turn one. Uh, I can't play that. I have no guarantee that the top card of my deck is a mana source. I just have to play the deck depths and hope that it works out. It's very disappointing. I think that's where I'm at. Archon's ability targets my opponent, does not target my creature. So the hope is that if they can produce a creature, they can only produce one so that I still can get a Merit Lodge attack in. If they can do Archon plus something else, I can't really win. Yep. Go ahead and discard a card here. I don't like how this is going to end for me. Like, it looks good in the short term. It's not going to be good in the long term. And winning game one, I think, is super important here. I am as all in as you can be here. Oh, fuck. This puts my opponent to 22 as well. I'm just dead. They don't even have to block. I was still dead to the Archon. Even if they were hypothetically at 20, they just block and then bring it back. Yep. I never produce more than one creature, right? Before this thing kills me in two turns, three turns. Okay. All right. So I have Ley Lines, I have Crypt, I have Inquisition. Sudden Edict is technically a thing that I can play. Not super interested in not of this world. Map is slow. Needle doesn't feel strong enough. Not a Shadow Spear matchup most of the time, unless things get real weird. Probably go down on Torpor Orbs if I want to play all of these. Opal's out. We Opal's out. This is a reasonable hand of lands and spells that has no plan to win the game. Like my plan is play Inquisition and then back with two ones. I'm not willing to keep that. But I guess fine. Probably keep this pitching a cavern. Gonna get rocked by a Serenity still. Uh, we'll lead on Crypt. Start with mana producing lands rather than Dark Depths. Sure. Sure. Okay. Game was in no capacity over, but we'll take it. I don't think I'm doing anything differently on the draw. Could get saucy and board in the Emrakul in case my opponent is on the show and tell backup plan. I'm not going to do that. Uh, this hand doesn't do anything. Auto mulligan. Uh, not good. I guess Hex Mage, Stage, Dreadnought are all reasonable top decks. Guess on five I'll keep this. I think throwing back one Gardens and keeping a Lotus Petal. I don't really expect this Ley Line to kind of go all the way on its own. That's a Hex Mage. I believe that means I play out Depths and Lotus Petal this turn. Or no, um, it's fine. Awkward if I get Thought Seized now, but I would have gotten Thought Seized on turn one if my opponent had it most of the time. Tear. Sure. Here's to hoping that they cannot go off fully this turn, that they need two turns. And a Traxa. All right, Lodge. And potentially beat Atraxa. Oh. We get unmasked and lose Vampire Hex Mage. Alright, so my opponent just used the Marsh Flats they did. Make a Grizzlebrand. An Unmask. A Dark Ritual. Okay. Alright, so I lose Vampire Hex Mage. Grizzlebrand got exiled. New Atraxa in the graveyard. Sure. Yuck. Up a gardens and pass. This Atraxa has me dead in three turns. I've got outs, but doesn't look great for me. All right. Okay, is this just a faith? Oh, it's an entomb. Yeah, I I won't beat an archon here. Really? 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 You just gave me merit lodge. Like, you also didn't get Archon when you had the option to get Archon. 
If I win this game, it is not on my own merit. Okay, opponent is going to three. What you got? Okay, they've got more. Here's an Entomb. Okay, um, try to beat that. Oh, I'll target Dark Depths. Make my Merit Lodge. I now get to sacrifice Vampire Hex Mage rather than Merit Lodge. Start a Cavern. I think I'm still dead. My opponent chumps with one of those and then gets to attack with the other two. Uh, okay. I think you knew my hand already. Sure. Keep the regular old Atraxa. Bloodstained Mire, Archon, Unmask. Sure. You could have not revealed your hand and just started the hand size. Um, so I'm dead if I don't attack because the Archon causes me to attack. So I have to attack and hope my opponent punts. Yeah. They did not punt. I mean, they did punt. It just didn't cost them the game. All right. I'm, I'm dead. GG's. My kingdom for just like a keepable seven card hand today that doesn't just have triples of things like Leyline and Torpor Orb that don't get better in multiples. Boring Urza Saga hand. Boring Urza Saga hand. Play Diamond. Start Bayou. Got Diamond for Thoughtseize already. Play an Opal. Play a Saga. Opal will be on as of next turn. We are playing against a blue deck of some kind, presumably. X Mage isn't fantastic, but we can work towards that technically with something like Expedition Map. Gotta fetch. Are we Delverin over there? We are Delverin over there. Means I'm gonna get owned by Meltdown in future games. Corpor Orb. I honestly think I just get Shadow Spear here. Like, this is just. I am Shaman. This is just textbook Urza Saga does Urza Saga stuff. Dot game. Not gonna do anything cool with these cards, in all likelihood, before my opponent concedes. Yep, that's fine. Wasteland is fine. Yep, that's okay with me. Also fine. I actually don't want to play Torpor Orb pre-combat, oddly, because if it gets countered, an artifact goes to the graveyard, beefing up Tarmogoyf. I'm going to go ahead and crash in with both of these for 11. Ooh. Mana is taking a chump block here. Play Saga. I think making my stuff one bigger is more important than resolving a Vampire Hex Mage. Force Pitching Force is fine. I am 100% fine with my opponent going down a land drop if they would like to daze this. Oh, sure. Next turn, both of these will be outclassing a Tarmogoyf. So I'm good with where we're at. Fine. How big is that? Seven, seven, sure. Don't have anything to do with that right now. I think I just wait another turn cycle or so until I just very clearly beat Murktide Regent. Just like very awkward if I trade for Murktide Regent and then my opponent plays a very large Tarmogoy for something that clogs the board. Okay, yeah. So Rug Delver. Sudden Edicts are very actively good. Plague Engineers and Ley Lines are playable. Opponent will have about two bounce spells that can answer the Maralage or Dreadnought. Probably not worth playing Not of This World. Ox Opal has been underwhelming as a whole. I just kind of have to decide what direction I'm going with this stuff. Like, am I going to play Ley Lines? It's a very bad draw. Pretty potent in the opener. I don't think there's any way I can play both Ley Lines and Plague Engineers. What if I caught Thought Saves, though? That could be six. I will slow myself down, become a bit more controlling. Okay, I'm not the biggest fan. Um, it's not bad. 
It's not good either. I think I keep this. I think I'll have four ley lines in my deck that are dead draws for starting out this way. Ooh. I like that a lot. That means I can't play Bayou on one. Gardens is reasonable. Gardens is reasonable. And I'm just gonna start feeding things to days. Yep, that's fine. Like, I'm going to Sudden Edict as soon as I have two mana. And I would like to get dazes out of my opponent's hand. Yes, that's fine. King one is no big deal at all. Uh, that's a weird one. I play this now. I play Bayou. And I consider Sudden Edicting Delver if Delver flips. Delver did flip. Yeah. If I don't do this now, like, the, it's hard for me to use that next turn, because, like, next turn I would like to Torpor Orb in theory. Bobble's fine. Yep. My opponent knows I have a Dreadnought. They have four cards. They've used one Daze. We find trading Torpor Orb for Force of Will. An awkward game. I think I jam here. Nice. So next turn, I will cast a Dreadnought, follow it up by an uncounterable Dreadnought, and then I'll beat most things that aren't Meltdown. Sure. Sure. That's a 3-3 three, three already. I hate that, like, most wacky, off-the-wall weird decks just lose to Meltdown, which is super commonly played because of how good 8-cast-style decks are. Okay. Is there any world in which I do not go for the kill? I don't think so. I think I have to go for it. If I go the slower, slower Urza Saga route, the Meltdown still just beats me later. Let's attempt Dreadnought. All right. I am Phyrexian. So it's I win or you have Meltdown. Those are basically the two scenarios here. Okay. I don't have it yet. Brainstorm is four looks at it, though. One from the Surveil. Three from the Brainstorm. All right. Uh, we got lucky. This is a hand with lands and spells that doesn't actually do anything. I don't have anything to pair with this. I don't have anything to pair with this. And I don't really have a good Urza Saga hand. <sighs> All right. Turn one Urza Saga. Mox Diamond. Pitching Bayou. Turn two gardens. Throw back one lotus petal. Play out the map. All right. Pretty telling that I'm winning games based on Urza's saga, not based on the things the deck is actually designed to do. So bad against wasteland and port here. Makes me not the biggest fan of this situation, but I don't think there's too much to be done about it. I get to play enough spells on turn one that I empty out my hand, avoid Athali attacks. But, like, my opponent is almost assuredly playing Death and Taxes after revealing Yorian and then playing Planes on turn one. Stoneforge Mystic can find a Cauldra. And I can try to keep the Cauldra on the defensive here. On a Wasteland to find. And play this out and pass the turn. Ultra is just so good against the non merit lodge portions of this deck. Uh, yep. Oh, you fucked up. You fucked up. Oh, I win. I don't mean to oversimplify it, but they just punted this game by playing that Aether Vial. Now, I get to make more constructs. The Pithing Needle Stone Forge Mystic. Now, I don't think I go for lifelink here. Urza Plowshares is too likely. Now this Cauldra never checks my constructs. Yeah, that's fine. Urborg. I'll pass turn here. Next turn I can make a Phyrexian Dreadnought if I want. I can end of turn. Grab. Another Urza Saga if I would like. I have a lot of options. I keep the map on board for now. It's just another plus one for the construct. I think I want to mess around with that. 
Um, it's fine. Oh, naturally just drew an Urza Saga. I will take that. Whip. Throw in seven damage. One's at 13. Revile can keep ticking up. That is fine for me. They use port to tap down Saga. I get a Dreadnought. And if they tap down both of these, they're not really gaining anything. Yeah, seems like my opponent is just passing. Sure. Load of mana. Fucking rookie mistakes. No, go to draw step and then float there. Because now, if I would like, I can crack expedition map and actually make a land drop for this turn in a way that leaves me with much more mana. Ugh. Probably grab Dark Depths. Threaten that. The mana producer, since I have Urborg in play already. Alright. Play Depths. Crash in. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. That honestly, probably should have happened already, though. That is saving a singular point of life because of Trample. Alright. File goes up to three. Flickerwisp stuff can start happening, where Flickerwisp can blink out a Pithing Needle, and then my opponent can get a mid-combat Cauldra. Is Skyclave Apparition taking out Shadow Spear? Fine. Remorseful Cleric. Interesting choice. Largely fallen out of favor. Okay. Activate. Sure. Another Skyclave. Taking out Needle is very good for my opponent. Increase my artifact count here, I guess. Grab an Opal. Play a Dreadnought. Copy a Dreadnought. One of these gets flickered. I want this land back. I'll sacrifice the original. I'm going to make this land drop in case I need it. Fine making this attack. That's fine. That still just gives me an extra body that helps me to go wide for any final damage that I need. I could consider playing a second Dreadnought there and just sacrificing the two Construct tokens. Not sure if that's right. Okay, that is Yori into hand. A pain in the butt. That's interesting. This makes me much safer versus Swords to Plowshares. And similar effects are the reason that I didn't want to go all in. Just because if I go all in, my opponent blocks one with Cauldron and then Swords of Plowshares the other, I'm basically dead. Because now attacking with two 12-12 Tramplers. My opponent's got a decent amount of toughness they can just put in front of it. Am I chilling? I don't really want to chill. I want to kill my opponent. So I attack with this. Aldra eats it. We will effectively have two 5-5s five afterwards. Ugh. I think I just wait. I have so many, like, Torpor Orb type things. I'm going to go for a single lethal attack. Yep. Game going long doesn't favor me. But my opponent has made a number of blunders. Like, they're advantage based on the deck they are playing by quite a bit. Okay, sure. I'll happily take that damage. 35 and 40 are functionally... Same life total as far as I am concerned. Uh, I don't know how I feel about this play. Feels almost certainly wrong. Okay, sure. Get an extra critter. You get some stuff back. Alder comes back. Down Forge occurs. We'll go ahead and not of this world. Counter that. Keep my dreadnought. On Torpor Orb. Sure. Yep, that's fine. This functionally changes nothing about my mana situation. Just playing the second Dreadnought. Protecting it from Skyclave, trying to rock in. I might be. I'm not, I'm not happy about this. This is not really how I wanted to play this. But my opponent's pretty likely to repeat what they did last turn. Alright, they did not bounce their Yorian. May or may not be a mistake. Hard to say. I'll figure out what I'm doing about this whole batter skull situation. They're attacking for nine. That is fine. 
2230. Post combat batter skull. Sure. Yes. Sure. I get another creature. Or sorry, that was a I fizzled that. So stuff comes back. Aldra comes back. Out of this world, this. There's a lion sash. Ugh. I attack in, I lose one to Cauldra. I attack in with the other one. It blocks with Batter Skull and something else. Alright, I'm just gonna concede here. I think my opponent punted this game so many different ways, but I just couldn't do anything to capitalize on it. I just drew lands and not of this world's. Alright, Plague Engineer is fine. Sudden Edicts are fine. What don't I want? Opal's awkward. Do I want the Knot of This World? Got like Swords, Solitude, Skyclave. I'll think about. Probably want them. Need four other theoretical cuts. Map is slow. Is Knot of This World actually better than Thoughtseize? Thoughtseize is the other thing that I'm thinking about cutting right now. Not really sure that it is. Despite the fact that I think this is perfectly reasonable. I think Thoughtseize is better. Who still want Plague Engineers. This hand doesn't do anything. I have single side of two combos. I'm going to go ahead and pitch this. And doesn't do anything. A slow Urza Saga hand. Not good enough here. I guess I can technically make a turn three Dreadnought with no protection, but I'm not really considering that as acceptable. Uh... Four lands on a sudden edict. I'll turn it like three lands and keep Mox Diamond. Hate it. Absolutely hate it. I'll start on Urborg here. Not going to play Mox Diamond on turn one. I don't know which land I want to discard. I'm pretty sure that I want an Urborg in play so that Dark Depths can be a mana producer. And the only thing that I would sudden edict on turn one is like a Mother of Runes. Thought sees you. Surgical Extraction. Awkward. Take Stoneforge here. I'm gonna lose this game. My opponent just naturally has Caracas, which means the Dark Depths plan that I'm working on doesn't really work. And they have double Skyclave. The other stuff doesn't work either. Go ahead and Mox Diamond. I'm gonna discard Dark Depths. Give up that plan. Play out Mycosynth Gardens. Going to be one of those times where it's going to take me 15 minutes to lose, but I'm going to lose. Yep, that was bait. I don't want to draw those, so thank you. Yep, I, like I am, I am walking my opponent actively into traps. They are falling for them, and I can't capitalize on it because my deck is not good. Yep, you want attacker. My goal is to eventually convert this into a two-two attacker. All right, and they're going after my mana. That's fine. I don't need very much to operate. Yeah, I need to do that right now. First strike. I don't really need to do that right now. Just send on in. All right, one's at sixteen. Yep. Fine. Fine. I just edict that. Not an immediate problem. And then. Try to find a pithing needle or something that just otherwise makes me more favored in combat. So I need my opponent to skyclave my hex mage so that I can make a 12 12. Not play this card this turn. At 14. I'm gonna confirm this is eye control. Yep. Yep, yep. Rear is very good there. We'll lose to that. We're just fine. Getting Cauldra is a dead draw. If I play Dreadnought, I get savagely two for one by Apparition. I'm, I'm just going to concede here. This is an uphill battle. That's not fun. One of my biggest complaints about this deck is it's so easy to have hands that have lands and spells that just do absolutely nothing. Yeah, like this. 
So both Mox Diamonds in this hand are dead. Mox Opal won't be turned on because I can't play a Mox Diamond. Uh, yeah, this probably has to go back. This is, this is just keeping an Urza Saga hand that can't actually use the Urza Saga. And does nothing. Saga, Mox Diamond, pitching an Urborg, Opal, Petal. Use these three to activate Saga. All right. Giving another all-in Saga hand on a mulligan to five. Not a fan. I'm just dead to Wasteland or any counterspell or Prismatic Ending. Or my opponent just killing me on turn one. That's fine, too. Maybe they won't have a creature. Oh, they actually didn't have a creature. Uh, we take those. We absolutely take those after a mulligan to five. All right. Diamond. Discard Urborg. Play Saga, play Puddle, play Opal. That gets me to Black Black on turn one. I've played out everything I've got. Now my opponent can still just like have drawn an Entomb. Just have like Entomb, land, reanimate, and I'll lose to it. But if they bricked, there's a decent chance that I can get to an Urza Saga situation where my opponent gets pressured out of reanimator range. All right. Oh, this is not nearly as bad as it could have been. This is just flashback faithless looting. Sure. There's a grief in the graveyard that they can reanimate. Uh, Grizzlebrand, last card reanimate. All right. We dodged for a little while. My opponent is going to draw the seven now. Thespian stage. Bro is not really accomplishing anything here. Can't attack into Grizzlebrand. I'm not technically out of this game yet. It's just very bad. Right, there's blue for sideboard show and tells. Sure. All right. Archon. Master. Yep. I will sacrifice the Hex Mage. Opponent attacks goes to 14. Means they're going to be outside of Urza Saga lethal range at 10, which effectively means that I'm at 7 because of the Archon trigger. Make a construct. Want to draw Dark Depths, maybe? Uh, Pithing Needle is too late here. I get Expedition Map off of Urza Saga. I can crack it using 2 mana, play Dark Depths. Have exactly enough to get a dark depths. Okay. Map. Crack map. Dark depths. Play dark depths. Last turn. Lose to another creature. Which is incredibly likely because my opponent can draw seven to fourteen cards. Technically they could draw twenty one if line up a certain way, but I'm not sure that they will. Sure. All right. Have a Sarah's Emissary? No. Another Archon of Cruelty. Sure. Unmask me. That's fine. Both come in. I sacrifice this creature. I am dead if I don't block Grizzlebrand. Which means that I have to go for this now. And then if my opponent has any reanimation spell in 17 cards, they win this one. Both because I am at one, and because an Archon of Cruelty hitting play means that I'm just dead. Yeah. Yeah. Are you just going to hard cast one to flex? Eight mana. Hard cast an Archon to flex. I respect it. All right. Um, we really needed to win that game, I think. All right. Leyline in. Inquisition in... I think I played Sudden Edict and Tormod's Crypt before. I got rid of Not of This World. Got rid of Shadow Spear. I got rid of Map because it was slow. I think I cut Opals. I cut Needle. Cut a Torpor Orb. Out of the Dreadnought. Uh, this is the same one half of the problem, one half of the combo problem we've had every round this league. This doesn't cast any spells. Yeah, 
So I always pitch one of the two Urborgs here. I'm pitching a petal here. Petal is just something that's going to get swept up by Serenity in a way that's not good for me. I'm going to lead on Urborg and pass all my opponent's lands. Pretty black anyway, so it's not really giving them much of an advantage. And this will turn my future things like Mycosynth Gardens and Dark Depths into black producing lands. Thought sees me and give me that three life. All right. Just a bad lands. Not white mana. Okay, cool. I will not be playing that out because of Serenity. Play Gardens and Pass. Discard takes this some portion of the time for me leaving it in my hand, but Discard probably doesn't matter. Like, Serenity is the best thing that my opponent can have to impact my board, and I would rather play around that than some random discard spell. Sure. All right, we're just going to get show and tell Accept my death. All right. Put in a new Mycosynth Gardens. And that Grizzlebrand will handily beat me. I just have nothing going on to offer counterplay to what my opponent is doing. Okay, no unmasks. All right. Second main phase, draw more cards. Sure. All right, there's an unmask. Again, the pedal mana doesn't matter much. As soon as I miss a draw step, I think I'm dead. I have to work towards Merit Lodge pretty much immediately. Something like Dreadnought is just going to get punked by Serenity. Well, Dreadnought would be okay. Not okay if my opponent has more stuff, though. Eh. Guess I can contribute to my artifact count. Serenity is now past the point of mattering. Like, I will be dead before Serenity matters. All right, drop, just kill me. You're down eight minutes of clock, just turn creature sideways, let me end my misery, do the outro, eat lunch, that's fine. All right, I'm, 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 I'm done, GG's. Well, that was, that was absolutely a miserable league. Uh, we, we, we did not play games of, of Legacy today. So I'm going to start with the overall thoughts on the deck list for my version here. Relative to what I was given as a starting point, this was, in my opinion, much better. This deck had interaction for my opponents in a way that was meaningful, both in the main deck and in the sideboard. The things that I had were incredibly relevant and useful. Um, I do not like the Mox Opals. I thought they were a little sus to start with, and I confirmed that they were indeed not super reasonable. Um, I do not like playing Not of This World. Uh, it is a dead card too much of the time. I almost always boarded it out, even in matchups where it was relevant. It is not a card that could imprint if you were going to play something like Chrome Mox in this deck list. And just generally speaking, it doesn't work with the Urza Saga Construct tokens most of the time, unless you're already winning really hard. And most of the games that I won were on the back of Urza Saga. Uh, this deck is slow and clunky. It isn't a better Merit Lodge deck than anything else that's out there. It isn't a better Urza Saga deck than anything else that's out there. And as a hybrid deck, I don't really think it's successful you still get blown out by Meltdown because you have so many artifacts in the deck list. And, like, the Meltdown is taking out the Dreadnoughts, one of the plans. It is taking out the Urza Saga, the second plan, and a Meltdown is still probably kicking you off of the mana that you need to Thespian Stage Dark Depths, or sometimes it'll destroy an Expedition Map or something that's played out. If we go back to the original deck list for a minute... This had some tutors, which can help with drawing the appropriate card, but, like, trying to get blue mana with what was on offer here, I think, was too much. Lazav is just another thing that runs into the Caracas problem, which we saw in the round versus Death and Taxes. And I think this deck is just going to be less consistent at trying to assemble a Dreadnought. Um, yeah, ba basically, I don't think the meta-level strategy that 
is being presented here is good. I think this is trying to shove together too many ideas into a deck list. This is trying to be an Urza Saga deck, a Dreadnought deck, and a Merit Lodge deck, and a Knot of This World deck at the same time. That's four things. And this deck was also trying to do those things, but also have some tutors, and Lazav, and Chalice, and four different colors. Um, so I just think in terms of deck building here, this this was just not a reasonable ask. Um, and I think this is just one of those times you scrap the whole whole deck, you go back to the drawing board, and you you take what was viable from this and see what you can do with it. But not of this world was fully in cute but not good territory. Like I used two of them versus death and taxes, and it just didn't matter. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my suffering. If you did, please click the like button on the way out. It helps out a lot. I hope you have a great rest of the day. See ya.